Hello, hello, and welcome to the Gaming Twins Weekly Show. My name is Nick, and I am joined by my carbon copy co-host in crime, Chuck. Well, hello there. Welcome, welcome. Uh, here we discuss the latest and the greatest uh, gaming news going on in the industry. And, of course, if you want to get in on the discussion, you can always leave a comment down below in the comment section. Or, of course, you can always join us each and every week at, uh, on Thursdays at our Gaming Twins live show, which is at twitch.tv slash gaming twins show. Now, this is indeed a podcast, and you can download that at iTunes or even the Google Play Store. Yep. Um, uh, and if you if you just want to get it on your computer, you can actually check us out at gamingtwins.tv. To which you can actually listen to the podcast straight off the website if you really don't even feel if you don't even have the space. Like my phone actually currently has less than a gig of space right now. Oh, I, I, I know I know exactly phone. how that feels. Yeah, I had yeah. to go on a big purge one time. Just killed all my like oh, games, no. you know. Oh no. Because you know, you know how you have like that stockpile of the very few mobile well, app games I, you respect. You know, no, no, no. It's the many years of of phones, and then. You just transfer everything forward, and it's like even discontinued stuff. You just transfer forward, and you just accumulate your pile. Yeah. You know, it's like you got a 64-gig phone, and you just dumped 63 gigs of old phone data onto your new phone. It's like, whoops. Yep. Nobody enjoys doing the purge. No. no. <laughs> I've lost so many good games. Yeah. It's pretty terrible. <laughs> Buy one gig in size, Kotar app. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to be discussing the gaming news. And actually, if you wanted to uh, add to the show, you can always tweet at us uh, a gaming news or story that's going on. Tweet it at, uh, at Gaming Twins, and uh, we can discuss it here uh, on the podcast. Or, of course, we can discuss it live on the live show. On the Thursday on show. The Thursday hey, show. join in. Jump into the and, chat. And that actually, uh, in. the case with the Thursday show is that that is a live one where we interact with you via chat and everything and we talk directly with you and stuff it's always a bunch of fun absolute blast absolute blast anyways a good way to open is always what have we been playing okay okay um uh so i'll start uh okay. what i've been playing actually just recently this weekend i've been playing a lot of overwatch recently yeah um uh all, all the news about doomfist coming out and that kind of thing um has really got me hyped for this um uh, on top of that i just love overwatch right uh, that being said, when I'm not going to be playing like an online game or anything like that, that single player experience I'm looking for, um, uh, I recently turned on Doom. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. that game is just a delight to play. It absolutely that is. is for sure. Um, uh, now, I, I already beat the game. I did my review on that. You can check that out on our YouTube page. Oh, I guess um, you can. Uh, we have reviewed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but I, I turned it on, and you know what? I said, you know what? I'm going to go through the levels, and I'm just going to get all the secrets. Okay. You know, get all the collectibles, blah, blah, blah. And that's not really something I've done before. Now, I know a lot of people, they are that completionist kind of person who wants to go in 100% the game, right, you right. know, and, and just find every secret and all that. And they'll, they'll get, like, this really big dedicated guide, you know, to doing it the correct way. Right, right. Um, uh, which I always thought was a fascinating way to play games. It's, it's not something I do. Um, but more recently, I've been, I've been really interested in it. Uh, and then, of course, the other thing I've been playing has been a lot of Breath of the Wild. Like, a lot of Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Um, uh, Did you get any further in the uh, Trial of the Sword? No, 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 no. I, I have actually been really enjoying, uh, uh, just so you guys know, we have been we stream every <coughs> Friday at 8 p.m. Central Time. In addition, um, yes. Uh, as well as our, into our Thursday show. Uh, but we've been streaming the Trials of the Sword, mm -hmm. okay, for the Legend mm -hmm. of Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC. And that's been a lot of fun. And I, I think I'm going to keep it there. Like, I enjoyed yeah. streaming it and that kind of thing. Um, uh, well, yeah, I mean, what, we got, like, Splatoon coming out. And yeah, Splatoon. Destiny 2 beta At the time of available. recording, um, uh, and by the time this posts, theoretically, yeah. Splatoon probably will be launching right. when this posts, maybe, oh, or even God. the next day. So it's actually this Friday. Right. Um, I'm super excited about that. I was somewhat excited. And somewhat. then they dropped the miserable news of, oh, if you want to party up with your friends, you need four of them. Well, that's the other thing is I'm not sure if that's only for Split Splatfest due to the fact that you have to be on the same team for Splatfest to join forces. I hope so. Um, uh, I, I hope so, but you know, it's Nintendo. Nintendo you know, knows. they'll always do 45% of what you actually want. Oh, I, I'm really generous. I say about 75% of what you want. But maybe maybe you're right. Oh, I don't know. What um, you're uh, about. But yeah, I've been playing a lot of Breath of the Wild. Um, I, I'm going it's through on a critical hard mode. Flaw. <laughs> I'm, I'm going through on hard mode now, yeah, yeah. and I'm playing the game in a certain way that I, the first time I just kind of blew through the game, right? You know, just for the experience. This time I'm going to go in. I'm going to get you know. Uh, I'm going to get all of the the shrines. We're going to get all the memories and all that kind of thing. Um, in hard before, mode. Yeah, in hard mode. Before uh, I right. actually okay. do the story. Right. Okay. So uh, I'm I'm super excited about that, and I've I've been playing. Endless hours of that game, 
just right. just endless. Uh, yeah, just having a lot of fun. How about you? What have you been up to? <clears throat> I have. Anyway. Uh, I have yes, still been playing The Last of Us. I am chugging right through it. Wait, I've, you find I've gone to play through. This? I've gotten through summer, fall, and I'm in winter. Okay. I'm, I'm like like halfway through those events. Okay, so um, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna, game, I'm gonna finish this game. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna finish this one. So, uh, you have to let me know if I have to play this game. Oh, you have to play this game. <laughs> like everyone's game. been saying, the game, since the it was game is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely and amazing. Then re-release. It, yeah, well, the the fact that it's a PS3 end of uh, an end of life PS3 game is bananas to me. Because you see this game, and you're like, oh wow, that's. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, just thoroughly impressed all all around. Um, and it's a whole lot of fun. It does feel... <clears throat> it does feel gamey. Right? Gamey? Video gamey. Oh, I thought you were going to... sense? Th- that, uh, um, okay. Which um, may, might sound strange to people, but what I mean is that it has a very distinct control scheme that works for this game. Like, I don't know. Like, if you were to drop this control scheme into, like, GTA Five. It'd probably be better because the controls are always bad in GTA. Yeah. But uh, I, I think it's perfect for what the game is. For the gameplay, the whole loop. I, I, I would know. have to see it. They, they know what they're doing. You, it. Just wait until you try it. It's an absolute amazing game, and you're going to have to play it. It's, it's, it's on that list. It's on that list. Right. I'm still going through Uncharted. Like, and, and that's it's the thing. On my list. That I, I started Uncharted 1, and I haven't played through. So I started with Uncharted 1, and I got to uh, The Last of Us, and if anything, I can only assume that this, that The Last of Us controls are the full realization of what Uncharted's control scheme is. Yeah. That's all I can imagine, because I, I haven't played Uncharted. I'm, yeah. So, yeah, otherwise, for the most part, just Last of Us right now. Okay. I'm playing a lot of that. Alright, so do you want to just, let's go ahead and jump into the news? Absolutely. The let's part? get the, the quick news and updates. Alright, going into the quick news and updates category here. First of all, hmm. Splatoon 2 had a splat fest. Like, I was, I was going to say like a, a beta. Oh a yeah, demo, it did. But no, it had a mother loving splat fest. Did you get to fest. participate in that? Oh, heck yes I did. Uh, you didn't get to play. No, I didn't get to play. I was out and about. I did not get to play, so I'm, I'm pretty disappointed that I missed that. But uh, No, man, I got to experience a Mother Love and Splat Fest before the share. game came out. Please so, share. What was it like compared so to like, the previous all, games? First of all, uh, you had to pick a team. Okay, of course. Uh, you had to pick, in, in this case, cream, clearly. It, was, it was ice cream, ice cream. or cake. Uh, that's, that's not an option. It's is cake. It? Yeah. They, they made cake an option? Like, cake. Who's cake bad versus idea was ice that? cream. Everybody knows, cake. Idea Everybody cake. knows ice cream is better than cake. Yeah. Yeah, ice cream. Uh, cake is actually right? the side dish, actually. Yes. Uh, ice cream is the main course. Everyone knows this. Yes, absolutely. Let you scream for ice cream. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That, see, that's, you you know, got, no one you says you that. scream for you cake. So anyway, I joined in with Team Ice Cream. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, um, uh, well, oh, no, 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 no. Now, here's the problem with I'm Team ex- Ice Cream and the fact that everybody knows ice cream is better than cake. What happens? Was Everybody's it- an ice cream. Oh no! Oh no! So no one can find a game. So no, no, no. We're finding games against other ice cream players. Oh! So you're just doing that same thing where you're you I was gonna say it's gonna be a crushing defeat for cake just automatically. Well, now that's because everyone knows ice cream's better than cake. Now that's the thing. They did have a arena. What's up? They had a balance. Okay, they they're not done. You know, they're you know, you're not down for the count just because one's more popular. That's only one spectrum of the boat. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh so, yeah. There's a performance. There is. So there's three things they measure it on, okay? Okay. Okay, So number one, popularity. Okay. Yep. Ice cream, crushing defeated. Yep. Just crushingly defeat on a cake. Just stick it on the cake. Destroy. Just just deflating. They have uh they have battles. Okay. Just who's to win and loss in regular battles. Okay. Ice cream takes it again. Okay. I swear to God. If Cake won the Splatfest, I swear to God, that's impossible. Last category. Last category, what is it? Tell me it's effort or will Matches with win-loss rate, but by group. Okay, if you're grouped up with four friends. So they match up a group of four against a group of four. This is why they have that four-man well, system. Well, what does this have anything to do with the ranking? Continuing. Uh, it's just one of, the, it's one of the categories. So did more of the, the grouped... Four groups of four people oh, in ice no. cream win, or more of the groups of four people in cake. Oh, no. Okay, cake took it. They can't win with that. Let's just hear it. So, how they measured this was okay. You have ice cream popularity vote, ice cream random battle vote, mm-hmm. cake group vote, group vote. That's two to one. 
Yeah. Ice cream tanks it. Really? Yeah. It's they, just they, two to one? Yeah, they got they, rid of the BS? Yep, yep. There's The BS math that didn't make any sense? Exactly. So it was honestly, it was just, they just went by, it's like popularity, random matches, grouped matches, and that is your three points. That's cool. But and it'll never go, it'll never be a tie at that point either. I see. You know, so it, okay. it's essentially a best two out of three. Doesn't that mean the of. first person who gets both of the first ones already knows who won? Or is it just sure, anticipation? But, did but they get the anything? That, did we win at know, all? Did the popularity vote, did the random battles win more often? You know, it, it, you know it'll vary. We'll see. Um, uh, I did see a very interesting um, uh, uh, article talking about how if Marina okay, mm. has already destroyed Splatfests. Oh Due yeah, to I, the crushing I, popularity of Marina versus Pearl. Yep, I yeah, I, I was actually thinking about this. I was, I was so, already thinking about some this. Some people are worried. Is that going to sway the vote? I don't yeah. know about you. Marina's awesome. Pearl. Yeah, Mar- Marina's not awesome. Pearl is just, it's weird. Just uh, just an weird. oddity. Mm-hmm. It's a little grumpy. Not, not not sure that facial expression she's got going on. Yeah. Anyway, but my point is okay. Is that there is a concern? You know that some people are going to sway Marina every single time. Yeah. Like even if that's like a an unspoken minority of the um of the um uh, the votes, okay, right, right. that just automatically go Marina. Is that always going to be a popularity vote on that side? Is it always going to sway the vote slightly? So you know, interesting concern, and we don't know. The game hasn't turned out yet. Maybe maybe Nintendo would just if it is a significant issue. Maybe Nintendo would just totally remove it and be like, you know what? No, they're not picking sides. You know, yeah. Like I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do. About well, that. they can't do that because even if they did, they're gonna they're gonna split the board down left and right. That's just simply how it's gonna go. Even if they don't vote. Yeah. So. So interesting, interesting. Anyway, um, uh, uh, yeah. So Splatfest, awesome sauce. Like we only. Well, had... how about the gameplay? You didn't gameplay, tell me anything about anything so essentially far. Essentially, the gameplay is the exact same as Splatoon One. You know, okay. there's a few new weapons. Uh, uh, there's most certainly some map rebalancing, and I absolutely love it. Then we had more towers. Yeah. Oh my god! But the lines so and stuff are they on a bunch of BS, or is that actually cool? They can go the lines over are and... great. There's way more mobility ability to to change sides and not get detected. Um, I, right, I, right. I absolutely love that balance, and of course, that's the only one I can really kind of discuss because it's the only one that was in the previous game anyway. Right. For so, comparison's sake. Just based on that, I can tell there was some serious balancing done to that map, and I absolutely love Moray Towers for that. Like it's not just a they're pushing you back to your spawn. And there's nothing you could do. Right. You know, there then, then, is yeah. at least three access ways of crossing that map. And, and it's fantastic. I absolutely that's, love it. That's pretty cool. That gets yeah. a, that gets the gameplay back to just what it needs to be. And I hope that that's, that speaks to uh, the <clears throat> effort that was put forth in the rest of their maps as well for balancing. Right. You know, I hope right. that it's not just a single lane of, of smash and death. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, and Splatoon 1 didn't really suffer from that too much. They did rebalance a, a number of maps. Urchin Underpass, for example. Uh, Moray Towers never really got rebalanced, but that was one of those ones that clearly yeah, needed. some minor ad- adjustments. <clears throat> but again, I, I hope that speaks to the rest of the maps in the game, that they balanced them very nicely. Right. The other ones that they did, they had... Um, uh, a pump back or something like that, uh, a racetrack or something like that. Right, Fantastic. Right, right. There was a stage level for a music concert, uh, which cool. worked out pretty well. Um, but again, overall, I absolutely loved it. I, I, I love Splatoon. I'm so happy it's back. You know, um, uh, but yeah, yeah. I'm just excited about that. Cool. So you that's play coming out this Friday. Friday. That, uh, yeah, this Friday. So I guess look forward to that. Definitely. Uh, now, do you, do, should I go straight into some other news about Splatoon? Uh, absolutely. Well, why not we just... Splatoon 2 it. has a release date of the uh, 21st of July. So that's this Friday. Okay. There okay. we go. I guess we know what we're playing. Heck yeah. Absolutely. Heck yeah. So yeah, join us on our uh, Twitch stream at uh, twitch.tv slash gaming twins show. Yep. So in other news for Splatoon, okay, apparently they're getting an anime. Oh, Okay. Yeah, so uh, we already had a manga, essentially, yep. via Korra Korra. Mm-hmm. Um, they are now going to be adapting that in, based on the uh, the uh, manga. They're going to translate it into a anime. I don't know if it's new or if it's just strictly based on the manga or if it's right, just right. inspired by the manga, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, but yeah, they're, we're going to get a Splatoon anime that's going to be shown on their YouTube channel. Oh, Oh, yes. uh, it's probably going to be like little four minutes. August twelfth. August twelfth. Okay. August twelfth. You'll be able to see the Splatoon uh, anime. Well, that's kind of soon. That's uh, kind of cool. Yeah, the Splatoon anime will make its debut on the company's YouTube channel on August twelfth. Yay! Okay, I'm okay with this. 
Yeah, so, I mean, I'm super excited about that. Like, the whole problem for me with Splatoon, okay, is Splatoon, it's single player, not a fan of. I never was in the first game. Okay. Um, uh, the second game looks like they're going to amp it up a little bit. But honestly, it looks like the exact same thing. And with them yeah. advertising, hey, a great way to learn multiplayer, a great tutorial for multiplayer is playing the campaign. It's like, yeah. Ugh. So basically, they're not even saying, come play this. They're not even trying to tease you an amazing story or anything. It's like, no, it's it's a great way to learn how to play the multiplayer. Exactly. Essentially. And um, uh, that makes me a little bit sad face, but... The whole thing that I felt that Splatoon as an IP was missing, okay? Like, they had this great world. They had this this weird, like, lore, you know, which really works with them. They had these squids, you know, which are, are all being fresh, you know, and they're changing up their style. And right. it's like, there's an atmosphere there, but there's no story there. And that's why I hope that the uh, the manga or and the anime, for sure, you know, kind of fleshes out some character development. Not that we need, like, special characters, but just someone to kind of give a face to the series, you know what I mean? Other than the random squid. And I, I love I'm afraid the they're just going to focus on random squid. In, in an anime? Like, how do you do that? They're just, I they're just the one manga. of the kids. They're one of the kids squids, you know? And, and uh, they just want the, the kids to feel like squids. I, I just hope so that they, they, make a they flesh it out character. a little bit. I hope they, they just flesh out the, the IP itself and give it some face value. I hope it's something slightly yeah, other than, than just the manga. This is multiplayer, you know, yeah. slamming into each other. Slash blah blah blah. It's not Mario in this game. They had some drama in the manga, and that's what and I'm some, hoping for. Some intimidating teams. They're all being a bunch of little punks. It was great. See, and that's what I'm hoping to see in in, in the anime. It's just like somehow like create a story that you it's care drama. about, you know, because it doesn't have a story, mm-hmm. and that's its problem, in my opinion. Yeah. I would love to see them expand upon that. That being said, I could not be more <laughs> excited for Splatoon two, which yeah, is releasing absolutely. July twenty first this Friday. I, I I'm I'm just so excited about that. Now, uh, this next thing, okay, kind of transitioning uh, with some Nintendo, okay. I was listening to Total Biscuit, okay, in his podcast, and uh, he put up a really great straw poll. Yes. Okay, where basically he was getting the the majority figures of how, where do you most often, or how do you most often use your Switch, which was uh, in mobile mode, uh desktop not desktop uh so docked okay yeah so we have portable docked and then of course both equally yeah so where do you majorly use your uh switch yeah so so essentially it says how do you how do you most often use your switch yep. uh the results are are extremely telling for nintendo themselves yeah okay? and here just for the numbers sake there were 2528 votes as of right now yes so so uh portable mode Okay, has 37% with 942 votes. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, that's 37% in just portable mode. Right. Docked mode, okay, so using it with your TV, yep. okay, has 33% with 844 votes. Right. And then both equally has 29% with 742 votes. Right. It's so, like, All it's so together. even. It's so weird. You yeah. got 37%, 33 and then 29 And it's yeah. skewing slightly lower as we go down here. But at the same time, they're so close. No, yeah, they're all really close to basically like 30, 33% is basically the average right there. Yeah. Kind of thing. So that's actually really amazing. It's like, it's not that, oh, people are just picking it up and it's like, oh, it's just a mobile device. I don't it's even use it on my handheld. TV. It's, it's not something. a it's real just a handheld. Or people console. saying, it's like, no, it's not a handheld. It's too big for that. I, I just use it as a home console. It's like, no, it's actually really close to even. Basically, people are using this thing however they want to. And, of course, because the option is there, it's not just a gimmick, the fact that the console's mobile. It's not just a gimmick that the console can be docked or the mobile console can be docked and played on your TV. It's like, no, this is – people can legit play how they want and people actually want to play these ways. As usual with Nintendo, I mean, you know, we all, we, especially with the Wii era, the Wii U era and all that, you know, me and you are always slapping around Nintendo about yeah. just, they so We love focused. Nintendo, this is why. We love Nintendo, that's it why, why we, we that's around. why we, 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 we respect know, them, that's why we slap them around, them. yes. Because we love them. Um, uh. But they were so focused on their gimmicks, they are always so focused on their gimmicks and it just drives you crazy, especially with the 3DS, it's like, right. 3D isn't why this thing is selling. It's because it's a great console. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, of course, with the Wii and the motion controls, it's like, that's great. You know, yeah. you're losing your core audience here. And, you know, it, it, does, it didn't turn out to be that big a deal. But that being said, with the Wii U, okay, they tried going with the, uh, the tablet screen gimmick on the controller, and right. that didn't quite turn out for them. Well, and you and yeah. I have just, we, you know, we've been slapping them around because we love them. But yeah, this is a perfect example of Nintendo's gimmick that has transcended. 
Sure. Well, if anything, uh, Nintendo, okay, had a big job with the Switch, okay, where the 3DS was basically killing it, okay? It was it was amazing. It had a junk load of great games, and in fact, I'd even encourage you to go out and get a 3DS if you don't have one. There's a huge library. Animal Crossing New Leaf, get any mainline Pokemon game, they're all good. Fire Emblem, oh my god, just get Fire Emblem Awakening, start there, you're gonna fall in love with it in the first five minutes, there's a demo, go try it. Um, uh... But yeah, basically, Ninten and Nintendo's home console, okay, was dying, okay, despite the fact that they've they've lived and breathed off of mobile consoles, like their mobile market and their home console market. And Nintendo basically, at least with this poll, is basically saying, is like Nintendo successfully combined their mobile console and their home console, and it worked. People yeah. are using it, people are buying into it, it's not a gimmick. It's not a gimmick that you can pick up this thing and go and just play it wherever. It It worked. You know, what, like it. one interesting side thing, and I, I want to show this. I want to show this to you guys on the uh, Thursday live show. Yeah. So join us on Twitch, of course. Um, uh, but I can't, I can't quite do that through a podcast. No. But no. Uh, we have some pictures coming out of like Japan, just based on the the insane lines that are just building up for the Nintendo Switch, trying to get their hands oh, on the demand. over there. Okay, the demand is so ridiculously high. They have a lottery system that they use. Oh, okay. okay you yes. give out switches. You essentially, you get in line, you get a lottery number, and if you get, and if they pull your lottery number, you get a switch. Dang. You know they hit like twenty something units, and it's like, sorry, but there's like two thousand, there's like a thousand people out here in line. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. You know that's what we got. Um, Dang. Uh, but uh, yeah, just a ton of information like going out on Twitter. We have we have like a Google map, you know, of them drawing on it to show how long this line is. Oh, geez. You know, and all, and all the people with pictures and that kind of thing. But uh, the demand is just so high for the system. Nintendo's doing it. They they're succeeding with this Nintendo Switch, and I'm I'm very proud of them for that. Yeah. Uh, easily easily one of the best consoles I've played in years. Yeah. You well, know? that was that was the classic thing. It's like. When the Switch first came out and we were like, played like, what? You'd play like two hours of Zelda and it's like, okay, I, I'm just going to give this a break. I'm going to save it. I'm going to do something else. And then you, you'd close Zelda and then you'd just be sitting there on your Switch. It's like, I want to play more here, yep. but I don't have anything else to play. And that's one of the things you and I have said continuously on our yep. show. It's like, you know, the fact that we, we're holding our Switch... And he's like, yeah, I played a lot of Zelda. I beat Zelda. Yeah. And, and you kind of put it down. And you're just like, I want to play on this system. And I think yeah. that just, it speaks to the quality of the system itself. You know, it's yeah. like they made a great system. And I, I can't wait to play more on it. That's why with Splatoon releasing so soon, I couldn't be more excited. More details coming out about Super Mario Odyssey, right. which just looks fantastic. <clears throat> so uh, just, it's like, just Nintendo, just just give us the games at this point. You know, we, the system's great. Give us that virtual console we're looking for. All that information, but uh, yeah. So overall, the poll was just—it was so awesome to see, just to see that odd split of essentially oh, everybody's using it equally on just about everything, right? You know, yeah. Um, well, speaking of insatiable hunger, uh, Super Mario Odyssey, okay, is a ways away. Now, yes, it is. Uh, Someone has made a mod for Super Mario 64. Okay, w one of those mods that notably came out uh, was the Super Mario Odyssey mod for Super Mario 64, where Mario can legit throw his hat. He can possess Goombas. Yeah, I said it, Nintendo. I said it, possessed. You can, you can possess things, okay? You can uh, possess Goombas. Um, uh, uh, you can bounce on your hat. You can hold the hat out in the air. It was interesting. It was, it was a fun thing. Anyways, from the same guy, okay, he basically made Super Mario 64 Maker. It's a modified ROM. You control it with an N64 controller, and you can legit build a level. And uh, Through the 64? Like, this through, isn't, like, some the, kind of mod tool or nothing? No. Oh. It's a modified ROM. That's all it is. You play it in any 64 emulator. You, you, you can use your N64 controller. That's it. That's, that's your means of, of uh, controls, okay? No keyboard, no mouse. None of that. And there's just the thing. Okay, he put out a demo video of it. Of course, we can't show it on the podcast. And, well, we'll, we'll show definitely it show it on Thursday. Um, uh, but basically, it shows him quickly making a level and shows how it's possible and test it all the way through kind of thing. And it's just the coolest goddamn thing. It's like, okay. That's awesome. Okay, Super Mario 64 Maker. You I'm know, okay with this. As a weird side note, um, uh, besides the fact that, you know, we have a Super, Mario, a Super Mario 64 Maker on top of the Mega Man Maker that came out. Of yep. course, we had Mario Maker, you know, come out yep. a few years ago. I have a Zelda Maker beta on my on my phone. Zelda Maker, there you yep. go. Yep, yep. Um, uh, but as a side note, 
I'm, I'm kind of curious how Nintendo sees this stuff. Like, of course, they're going to probably do some takedowns and that kind of thing. Oh, they're going to take Just because. Um, uh, and that's what Nintendo does. And, you know, yeah. hey, it's their stuff. They can do what they want. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I'm curious, like, what Nintendo thinks when they see these things. Like, I don't know what their tools were like to make Super Mario 64 back in the day. Like, it's like someone hacked the original ROM, essentially. Okay, that's as a it, different as perspective. An editor, bam, slap into the it's ROM It's really itself. interesting because it's like you flip through all the objects and then you grow and stretch the objects and then you can adjust the texture and everything. And it's like just placing it and these things, they have like their own settings to where it's like platforms that'll spin and stuff like that. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. Really it's cool. that, like... Like, it's interesting. Like, does Nintendo look at this and, like, they built the editor in the game? Like, was that even possible back then? You don't there? know what Nintendo's going to think. Nintendo just has their hypersensitive PR team. It's like, take that down. They're going to make us look bad. It's like, <laughs> it's like thanks, Nintendo. Somebody's going to draw something unsavory in a level, and it's going to be bad for us. Take yep. it down. Yep. Then they'll think we made it. Ah. Nice. Ah. Always, always, always. Okay, well, other additional news. Uh... Really classic MMO RuneScape, okay, is now coming to mobile devices. I heard this and I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Legit, the full RuneScape game. And not not to mention, this is uh, cross-play. How is this going to work? So you're playing the full PC MMO on your phone. It's just it's just a hey, if it runs better than the PC version, I'll be happy. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Um, but anyways, I'm actually super excited about this. Apparently, uh, Jagex, okay, the original company who made RuneScape again. <laughs> yeah, that name. We haven't said that in a while. Man, it's been a long time. Since long time. About. Man, I love. I um, used to love the game. Oh man. Uh, anyways, the thing is that they did a poll and they said an overwhelming 90% of players uh, said that they would very much like to play RuneScape on a mobile device. Like how is so it going like, to play? So we're going to do this. They have they have concept images and everything. They show how the interface the interface like. So they've just announced it. It's not actually like here. They just now. announced it. Ah oh, dang! I was hoping it yeah, was like out okay. yesterday. I, I heard that they were talking about something about it on so iPad or something, and I don't know if that ever came out or anything like that. But uh, anyways, uh, right now they're advertising it for uh, the phone. So it's coming to phones, basically. Heck, they're saying that this yes. is definitely happening. This is we're planning on this. This is and they're showing it. That it, might give me a play again. Everything. Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, like, I absolutely. stopped playing because, you know, World of Warcraft was available. Now, I mean, you know, your phone's not about to run World of Warcraft. I mean, if you do hack it in there, you know, it's not going to be pretty. I don't care going back for the glory days, man. That was a good old game. Yeah. Good old yeah. Day. Okay. So, I mean, like, on my phone, it's like, that's something I would totally be uh, willing to jump into. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I personally actually don't have a PC. I have this disaster Chromebook over here. I have a little disaster tablet that doesn't have a physical keyboard, which makes playing I told anything you not possible. To long time, no, it's actually yeah. really nice because I have all my editors on. It's the best thing ever. And you could do anyway, that with the desktops too. So. I could, but I can't take that to work. Thank you very much. Anyways, it's super annoying, and I don't like playing actual games on it other than my god dang editors. But uh, the fact that this is accessible on something that I use on a daily basis, like my phone, okay, I can have it with me. I can just pop in, check in, check my stock market prices or whatever. Yep. Um, uh, I think that's really cool. That it, that it, I have been always like just falling off because it's like I don't I don't do any of this on any of these PCs. I'm not sitting at home using a PC or whatever. I don't have time. I got to work. Whatever. Never home. Um, uh, so the fact that it's available on phone is actually really cool. Yep. Really really that's cool. Really fantastic. I, I I can't wait to see that. That's awesome. Right. Anyways, uh, next thing. Okay, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is getting a first-person-only server soon. Okay, so this uh, coming from the devs, I guess. Um, so in, can you tell me like the impact of this? Like I was. Seeing, this is awesome. I was seeing an odd kerfuffle about this. Like I didn't understand. Well, okay. Like okay. Like it, is it? It's a. For the record, ahead, I haven't played this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. As far as I'm aware of, yes, it's a third-person game mm-hmm. like i heard okay they're gonna get first person only servers it's like mm-hmm. because i heard that you i, I think you can switch between first person and third person yep. but it's kind of unfair you might as well just play third person uh speaking of like an elder scrolls online issue where it's like don't play first person you're hurting yourself you gotta yeah. play third person same thing goes really... for uh star wars battlefront ea's new exactly. star wars battlefront exactly. it's like you can play in third or in first person but if you're not in third person you know it's just whatever you messed so, uh, so basically, for balance and fairness, they are making a first-person only server or only servers. Okay, um, they uh, said it is totally optional, and they will never force you into playing uh, the uh, the first-person servers. So basically, it's like you will always have the option to play. You always have the option to go into a first-person only server. So, uh, uh, so that's really cool. 
I, I personally think this is really cool because I really like playing my games in first person, but of course, when there is a third person option, it's like, well, you can play in first person, but you are hurting yourself. I love playing Star Wars Battlefront in first person. It's really cool to feel oh, like yeah, you're I down on you. the ground in a Star Wars movie, you know, as a stormtrooper um, or a rebel, um, which is really dagnab cool, but of course, third person. You should be playing in third person, then you, you'll be able to see more. That that sort of thing. So I think this is a really cool idea. Um, I do too. Because really I mean, kinda... I am excited about it. I mean, it's coming to Xbox One. Right. Um, uh, which Yay, is awesome. I'm okay I mean, with this. I'm very, very happy about that. Right. And and if any... I'm happy it's coming to Xbox One and a lot of people would be seeing this kind of like playing like Counter-Strike with a controller like on a console. It's like, that's like a heathen move. It's like, yeah, but at least you can play it. I did that at least once. You can play I it. did that once and admittedly, Counter-Strike is one of the worst things with a controller. The oh, controls are so unoptimized, it's the worst experience. Oh, no. I'm not kidding you. Like, you can't, you can't aim. And most people would just be like, well, yeah, yeah you can aim with a mouse. You know. I'm telling you for someone who plays like, you know, a lot of online shooters on consoles and that kind of thing, and I'm not just talking about aim assist or anything like that, okay? I'm telling you, it's like impossible to aim. Like, it jumps like over too far. Like, it's it's just a nightmare. It's like, how am I supposed to play this? Uh, so, see, uh, see, on consoles, that, that's what the aim down sight button is for. Exactly. Which totally, totally worked. I really love that uh, feature, but uh, yeah, it's uh, that's exactly why I'm terrible at Halo. There's no aim down sight, so it's like I just overshoot everything. You know what? Actually. Yeah, we're just going on a side tangent here. But okay. um, uh, now that I've played a lot of Overwatch, which does not have an aim down sight in any way, shape, or form, oh, it needs one. I bet you I would do a heck of a lot better at uh, Halo. Yep, absolutely. Why do you think I play Symmetra all the time? Aims for me. I'm trying to hold back. <laughs> <laughs> trying to hold back so much here. Oh, oh my goodness. All right, so moving oh, on uh, to this. Just, just saying. Go ahead. Okay, so just to finish up with Overwatch, Doomfist is releasing July 27th. I was about to say that. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited now. I know some of you PC players are already playing Doomfist. Like, what you talking about? We're I hear he's playing. a lot of fun from what I've seen. He's a it blast. It looks like a blast. Of, it's like I'm not rocket even playing, but he looks in the air. like, like a, oh my God. a blast and just so much fun. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so yeah, he's finally releasing... Um, I'm I'm super excited about this because if he's releasing, that means I get my patch for the mother love and loot boxes. So I stop getting duplicates. I swear to you, I swear to you. Okay, three out of four items in every loot box I get are duplicates. I think that means you've it's played the game crazy. out. I don't even have that many that much stuff for everybody, and that's what's driving me nuts. Like I'm getting currency, you, and I'm like, okay, this is great. No, the, the, the stuff you button. don't have is the more rare stuff. You've hit all of the uncommon stuff I because guess. it's too uncommon for in comparison to the rare stuff. So and now that's the other thing is you're getting they, lots of dupes because you're just getting all the common. I got a of a duplicate legendary skin. I was like, oh, this is great. Claps what a you. great Winston skin. You know, it's the it's the mother loving aquatic skin, and it's like, oh, it's a dupe. And I was like, oh, peachy. <laughs> Finally, get a legendary skin. It's a dupe. So, um, but they, they did Ow. say with this patch upcoming that uh, the duplicate rate will be significantly dropped. Okay. Um, that being said, currency drops will increase. Okay. Or at least the amounts you get from currency drops. Um, so overall, I'm excited about that new balancing. I'd imagine currency drops themselves may increase because when if they want less duplicates, then you can't be getting all the same common stuff you get all the time because you already have all the common. So it's like they're probably going to start filling that in with currency. Yeah, I'd imagine. So you're probably... I'd be curious if after that patch actually hits, you're getting currency in almost every box. Specifically, someone who like, has why not? that I mean, many every dudes. box was currency, it probably wouldn't really bother me that much. Yeah, that would, be, that that would be actually fun. allow you to actually like buy the things you want, so that'd be cool. Now, okay, we're going to go into some of the more main stories, okay, but I okay. did want to discuss a particular thing linking to Overwatch. I thought this would be a nice segue here. Sure, Just sure. Let's, let's about some Overwatch let's here. Hear. So, uh, just recently, uh, Jeff Kaplan, okay, who is the um, the game director of Overwatch. The dude who disses everyone with the mini death laser high noons. <laughs> no, that's Dino Flask, who does a great <laughs> job of, of modifying his his uh, words, altering his his messages. Um, but, um, uh, yes, it is that guy. Okay. Uh, okay. So, he recently released the map data for Quick Play. Okay, so Quick Play, not really the professional stuff, you know, but the win rates... Uh, for match or for maps, okay. okay, in quick play. So essentially, an average of of uh, wins and losses for each map in quick play mode. How's that possible? Shouldn't that be like fifty fifty? Because you know, someone has to win, someone has to lose. I'm confused. 
No, no, no. The like is is Dorado always focused on winners? When almost everybody wins on Dorado, or you know, what's the win ratio to loss ratio on Dorado? Sure, let's hear. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the data is absolutely fascinating. Oh, this is per side. Okay. Okay. Yes. I, I I understand. Okay. Okay. So okay. For example, Hanamura forty nine point forty nine percent. Uh uh uh. So I'm gonna say the win. Okay. So essentially, forty nine percent attack, fifty percent defense. Okay. It's a fifty fifty rating. Okay. Horizon, okay, uh, is the newest map, okay, uh, 54% attack, 45% defend. So it's pretty hard to so defend on Horizon. Yeah, it's a little harder to defend on Horizon. It's leaning towards attack. Okay. okay. Oh, I'm curious I'm sorry, to these see numbers, the rest of this. These numbers, it, I'll prove my point here, okay, as I go through this. Temple of Anubis, 49% attack, 50% defense. Pretty even. Uh, Volskaya Industries, 49% attack, 50% defense. Eichenwald, okay, one of the other new maps, okay, 46% attack, 53% defense. Okay. Hollywood, 49% attack, 50% defense. Oh my god, Kings okay, Roll, 50 I see, I see attack, what you're getting at. 50% defense, Nibani, 50, defense, 50, Dorado, 50, 50, essentially, Route 66, 50, 50, what the heck? Gibraltar, 50, uh, 50. The mother-loving game is balanced! Yeah, okay, so How it's... How the heck did they do that?! They know exactly what they're So doing. the two maps that are unbalanced, okay, are Eichenwald and Horizon, the new which maps. are the only maps that have been new and released! Wow. Okay, so like, they Jesus, clearly have this it's game. 50 yeah. Like, you always think that. Yeah. You always think that. Uh, I That's... do see a missing map, though. Um, the other the other new map. The space map. Oasis. Map. Oasis is What about here. the lunar map? That's uh, uh, Horizon. Oh, it's Horizon. Okay. 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 Um, uh, so I don't know why Oasis is missing. <laughs> I don't know what the radar on that. I'm, I don't know. Um, uh but anyway, oh, that I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Some of these maps, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, those maps are uh, base captures, so you wouldn't have an attack and defend. So oh, these, are, oh, these okay. are transfer maps. Oh, okay. forgive okay. me, forgive me for my ignorance. See, see, um, see, uh, see what you did. But essentially, the maps are 50-50 balance. That's amazing. That is actually pretty amazing. I can't believe that. Anyway, I, I, I sorry. I'm just throwing a little love Overwatch's way. I absolutely love that game. Blah 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 blah. I, I, I can see it on your shirt. The map. Oh yeah, I'm wearing I'm wearing my Love Diva shirt. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, the game's balanced. Yeah, it is. So mother loving weird. Anyway, I just thought that was game. absolutely fascinating, um, uh, just to see that data there. That absolutely is. Um, all right, uh, we're going to move into our main stories. Yes. Today. Yes. Okay. What's our main story? Our main today? story. Weird. Atari unveils their new console. What? what? Now here's the thing. A few months ago, they did release a teaser saying that, "Hey, we're gonna get back into the into the, the hardware, hardware business." business. Like, and we're like, okay. It's like, are these, these those little games you you uh, you get on the shelves? Like yeah, the TV machines? ones with yep, the little, little you plug it in the back of your yep, TV. They'll never have an HDMI cord. They'll still be yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Um, uh, so yeah, is this a plug and play device? You know, okay. And then they showed the teaser, and everybody's like, okay, what is it? Like a NES Classic? You know, they're like, oh yeah, it's gonna you're gonna be playing NES Classic Atari games, blah blah blah. <laughs> and they're like, okay, what is? It? So it's a NES Classic, whatever. You know, we've seen a dime a dozen Sega units. We've seen a dime a dozen. I own an Atari uh, TV plug and play one. Yep. Okay. And, with, uh, with a bunch of games. And on it's like, why are you making series? a press release out of your plug and play little box? Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's like what? What? Well, guess what? They did a Mother Loving reveal today, and it, well, actually, I think it was yesterday. It's, but it doesn't exactly look like a, a retro box. That's a fair way to put it. I was gonna say I'm not quite sure what it is, but it it's definitely not a TV plug and play. So uh, I I did pull out some of the actual quotes released but with this information is. coming from from their uh, the newsletter that came out of their site. Um, I, I I signed up for the newsletter because I you know I'm looking for it. I'm always curious about a new console trying to come in. Yeah, you know especially the oh yeah I was like okay oh yeah you know what you gonna do with this yeah. and then he shield you know yeah. that didn't quite exactly turn out. Um, uh, interesting console. Here you go. Here you go. Get that oh yeah out of here. Nope. Oh yeah is here. Oh yeah is here to stay. For the record, oh, behemoth. Control. For the record, we own an oh yeah, but not for the reason you think. Nope. We used it uh, actually as a dev unit um, for our mobile apps and yep. uh, our PC games, mm -hmm. or, uh, games that we were developing. We, yeah, we wanted to make uh, little games and stuff, and uh, be able to play it with like a controller on its own little box and on its own little console. Um, uh, but yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Anyway, that's a fun side note. Yep. Uh, but uh, so they revealed a bunch of information today with their newsletter, and here's what it said. Okay. Let's hear it. Uh, uh, as you okay, so first of all, uh, before I get into that, uh, there are no specs. 
Okay, what we can see based on the screenshots, okay, it has an SD card slot, okay, in HDMI output, and it has four USB ports, right. okay? According to the newsletter itself, it says, as you, can, as you can guess, these ports suggest modern internal specs. This means that while we'll be delivering classic gaming content, we will also be delivering current gaming content. Yeah, what in the junk does what that mean? What the heck does that mean? So, it's like, wait, wait, wait. So, okay, it's cool. Okay, first of all, I do want to point out, there's no disc slot in here, and you're not about to jam an Atari cartridge on this thing. It doesn't have a port for it. Yeah. Okay? So this is not some retro machine that you plug in it's old It's not a retro player, you know. nostalgia player or anything like that. And as far as we're aware of, it's, it's, it, they do say you'll be able to play a classic Atari games on right, this right. system, mm -hmm. but they're going to also include modern content. So, uh... With all that said, okay, it does not have a disk drive, so this is an all-digital console, okay? So we're looking at a marketplace of some kind, okay? So it's a, yeah. a marketplace where you can get apps, okay? Uh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I hit the, I hit the microphone there. Um, uh, the Ouya had a similar system where it was a marketplace, but you could get, like, mobile apps, like Android apps, because it was an Android-based system. Right. Um, uh, you... and it's like, yeah, okay, you know, that's interesting. The Ouya died its inevitable death, as everybody knew it was. Yeah, as soon as it launched, it literally keeled over and died. Yeah. Like, and then as they soon sold, as it launched, they basically... They sold the OS, I believe, to NVIDIA Shield. Yep. And yeah, then, they duped uh, it out. Then NVIDIA Shield was like, okay, well, we're just turning this off because it's a competitor. We're just off. Yep. And then the as online as service was down. The and NVIDIA done. Shield is long dead as well, isn't yeah, it? Is. Like, they shut that down. No, right? no, no, no. NVIDIA Shield is long living. It's in the Switch. It oh, is the Switch. Oh, that's sad. Just yeah. saying, it is the Switch. Good for you, Nvidia. I mean, that was a good idea. They did. They route. were excited about that announcement. They said we're we are working on a long partnership with Nintendo from now on. And of course, it's like Nintendo. You're making Nintendo's <laughs> console hardware? handheld. You know, Nintendo's hardware. That is that is Phenomenal. a deal you want. Anyway, so we're looking at a marketplace of some kind. So is some this essentially this? the NVIDIA Shield, you know, jammed into this thing? You know, clearly it's not portable. It's not a portable gaming console. Right. Uh, if you actually see the uh, images for this, I'll show, I'll show a few to you, Nick. We, we can kind of discuss. Right, 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 yeah. Um, uh, so essentially they have a nice classic wood grade console of uh, where it has the nice grooves that you're you know used what it looks to see like? to the Atari. It looks like one of those oil heaters, you know, where it's just a bunch of rivet things, a bunch of metal rivets all the way along the line. The whole thing is, is, a, is a plastic air vent is what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, now that being said, okay, the, the classic Atari does look like this. Yeah. It, ha it has these ridges and that kind of thing. Um, uh, but they'll also have a plastic version with it's kind of black and red. The mm -hmm. other one is black with the wood grain, which I'm yeah. definitely picking up yeah, the wood that's grain cool. one. That's kind of just cool. depending on how this thing turns out. But anyway, so I mean, are we going to be getting modern games on this thing? Are they just like they pulling their leg and stretching modern it? content? I hope to God we're not going to get basically the yeah, you know, where it has a touchpad here. You can't but what about it. the Nvidia Shield? We're looking at you know Assassin Creed, Assassin's Creed on those on that console. You yeah, know, see, and, uh, that was the thing. That was the thing. They released Assassin's Creed on the Nvidia but, Shield. Okay, not only that, but they're saying they're they're essentially saying that this isn't going to be a classic system. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember where I pulled the model of quote out from, but they're saying that this, this console is going to sit alongside your PS4, or your Xbox One. Or your switch, and I was like, "What? It's Wait, like you're is trying this to like stand up actual... to the big dogs? Exactly. Is this like an actual entry into the console gaming market? Right. right. But from what all from what I'm pulling out of this, okay, it certainly seems like it's going to be a digital marketplace. Um, will it be offering the next, you know? Titanfall game? Will it offer Battlefront, you know, the next Battlefront 2 game? Like, I don't know. NVIDIA Shield tried. It seems a little weird. Like, how much is this thing going to cost? Now, some other very interesting information that uh, actually came out of this. According to Eurogamer, okay, they pulled this out of a uh, French uh, investors meeting. Okay. okay uh, notes from a French, uh, French, well, why investors meeting? Um, uh, so essentially, this is coming from Eurogamer. Since uh, we reported on the story, we have more details. Uh, from a French uh, investors meeting issued at the end of last month, the notes in or the note indicates the new Atari box is going to be crowdfunded. A detail which was left out of today's press release. Oh, so what? essentially, what is this going to be? A Kickstarter? Like, is what? the demand there? Like, if the demand's not there, then maybe it's not going to work. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And oh yeah, fail? I don't God, know. No! So Atari. essentially, this thing's going to be crowdfunded. They want to test the waters. They it's want to know yeah. if people want this thing. Is it the next Ouya? Is this going to be a successful Ouya? 
Now, here's the thing, okay? They're talking about this thing being crowdfunded, and of course, they didn't announce that. But uh, what Atari did say in the press release is that they want to, they're being careful. Like, there's a reason they announced this thing. There's a reason they're announcing it so early. There's a reason they're not saying much about it. It's because they want to test the waters and see what people think. Now, that may go along with the idea of crowdfunding, or at least crowd-influenced, okay, in its design and what this yep. product may end up being. Um, as for actual crowdfunding, it could potentially be funded by people. Maybe those who do a Kickstarter and they're going to make everything what everyone wants and hope to God. I mean, it's not this thing, this ooh yeah again, because I mean, that's... This is what the Ouya was. Everyone was super mega excited. It was like the top Kickstarter thing pretty much ever. It exploded, yep. and as soon as they started delivering, it was like, they were just they were just dead. And that's the thing. And they were they were just <laughs> duking out the units, and they were gone. <laughs> and, and that's Who the whole just thing. Gone. I mean, we got this thing on clearance. Okay, first of all, I was never gonna pay a hundred dollars for this thing. Heck, we got it on clearance of fifty percent off. Now I feel bad because no, no. Then again, I don't. Never. And we only we picked it up. We saw fifty percent off, and I was like, "I was like, that's a dev unit. It's a dev unit. Like, yeah, we should grab that. Yeah, uh, just to, just support it to the, to our, our an actual conflict. Just an interesting uh, conflict. Yeah, and I, I'm but, I'm laying a bunch of crud on this thing, but I am actually thrilled that we actually have this little thing where we can like test games and stuff. And and here's cool. the thing, okay, is that. You know, is this thing going to come out and is it going to completely flop? Or do people actually want this thing? We saw the Ouya fail epically. <clears throat> We've seen how many crowdfunding things just completely I'm afraid. I'm afraid. when it comes to the gaming industry. I'm, I'm, a, I'm afraid Atari is seeing Nintendo with their NES Classic and then seeing Nintendo saying, Nintendo could have had something here. They could have made the... This could have been a virtual console box. You could have had a marketplace. You could have been downloading all the games you want. You could have been charging fees and all this other stuff. We're going to do it. See, and they claiming, didn't. And they're claiming this thing's going to have modern specs. So, I mean, are we going to get modern games too? Like, it's just, it's such a weird, like, I am. <clears throat> they said, if anything, it's, it's, it's got modern specs, yes. But I don't think they're guaranteeing that this is going to be modern games. If anything, it's just going to be <clears throat> modern content, I'd imagine. But they can't come out releasing modern oh, yes, they can. 360 games. So no, 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 no. At, I'm saying, like, well, if they want to make a new Pac-Man game, a new Pac-Man 256, okay, and they put it exclusively on their Atari yeah, but box. This is suggesting that they have like I they have games that are going to be on it. They have they a backlog. Know. They have a backlog no, no, of no, games. No. It's just the classic games. I'm talking about like they're talking. If they're talking about modern content as well, it sounds like they've already have a few developers who are like, oh yeah, we could we could make it work on those specs. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, so yeah. what is that game? What like Titanfall two? Like EA? Is this Ubisoft? I don't know. Basically, they're being incredibly. Vague, vague. They, 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 about they what this they're, thing they're trying is. to play it safe with this thing. Um, right. uh, so I guess we'll see. I could only imagine that they're going to try and do a marketplace, you know, and make their own content and put their own modern hardware. I'm holding up the Ouya right here and shaking now, it. Now, not only that, okay, but here's the thing about Atari itself. Its image is so badly damaged already. Look at Sega nowadays. Yeah, well, you know, they're, they're, it's they're, just not as it's not as vibrant and lust, lusterful, no, shiny. They but they haven't really done anything. They do they do ports, okay? Sure. They do the Roller Coaster Tycoon series, which they effectively destroy. Hey, I, I just want to comment, guys. The only Roller Coaster Tycoon you need is the mobile game. Oh my god! Oh yes. my god! It's basically Roller Coaster uh, One and Two Fun packed together note. with uh, perfect mobile controls. And I have to say, we grew up playing that game. I totally vouch for that. In fact, actually, the mobile version might be the best way to play, which is really cool. It's, it's really goddamn I'm, cool. I really, I was really impressed with that. And if you're a, a real fool like me, you get the original game and you play it on a touchscreen device. Like I have a Windows tablet PC. It works great with touch. It works great with touch. <laughs> Because and, they're and just big why, buttons, and, and that's why they ported it's like, it. This is cool. That's why they ported it, and uh, th that's one of the few things that I have liked about Atari. Now, that's the whole thing about Atari, okay? With its image so damaged, okay, they are trying to repair it. I don't it think was it's recently, damaged. They were, it's just they, they went it's bankrupt. Just rusty. They went bankrupt. Okay, sure. and then they okay, went so bought out by a billionaire to, to investors and stuff. But the thing is, is that to the public eye, it's just the fact that they're they need a new coat of paint and they need to be buffed off a little bit. But but here's the thing. That new coat of paint seems to be a mother-loving modern console. It looked kind of slick. It was an air vent, and it had red. The Dreamcast failed. I know. <laughs> I know. Like I like I do. I just don't know if the market has room for a realistic fourth entry. I'm not. I'm not talking about PC. I don't PC think it does. I don't think it does. I mean, you need a way bigger name than Atari. Maybe, maybe I'm not even saying that, but I mean, yes. Uh, I guess Atari has a classic backlog. 
I, I guess the way we have to look at this, okay, is that it's not go- clearly it's not going to compete with with you know uh, Nintendo and, and Sony and Microsoft. Okay, it's not going right. to compete with them. It's just not. Okay, could it be this interesting side unit that that uh, a parent picks up, you know, because it has yeah. those classic games they grew up with? Yeah. Uh, at this point, for sure, that's definitely their age range. Um, uh, but not only that, okay, Atari. I mean, you know, for me and you, the only Atari experiences we've ever had was with the twenty six hundred. Yeah. Okay, that's the unit I have. Yeah. You know, and I've collected multiple games for. But there, were, there was the uh, the. The fifty two hundred, I think, and the the other eight hundred or something like sure, that. Sure, the other editions, which were far more graphically enhanced. You know, yeah. competing with the with the NES. Okay, and um, I don't know about the Super NES at the time. I, I don't know, but anyway, there's there is gaming content that they could bring to this console as well. Of course, yeah, of course, not just course. The, you know that old twenty six hundred <clears throat> stuff. Um, uh, you know how much I would have loved it if Nintendo did make like. A game service box out of the Desk Classic made the virtual console that isn't on the Switch as this this device. Just kept cranking them out, you know, to where everyone got them and then made a marketplace out of it. I would have so loved it if Sega and Atari would got in on the game and made their own little game service box competing, like this old like retro service boxes game well, or thing. Now, oh now, my god, it would now, have been so cool. What about this though? What about this? Okay. So let's say this Atari thing succeeds weirdly. Now I'm not saying like, you know, on the on the levels of Nintendo, Microsoft, or Sony, okay. Yeah. yeah. But let's say it's Viable. They sell a million something units. Okay, maybe maybe a few more. Right. Uh, right. Maybe that's not enough. But anyway, point is, okay, they sell a few million units. Okay, and it's like, okay, hey, this marketplace is making money. We have got games. There's people in there. Okay, it's not the best experience in the world, but hey, it's a it's a cool side thing you put on your other TV. Right. Price is gonna be a, se- a serious factor. Okay. Yeah. Let's say Sega joins in as well. <laughs> And they're, and they're like, See, oh, but you get Sonic Mania with the mother loving box. Okay, you that's know, like, cool. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, could this be an alternative? You and I talked heavily about this, especially with the Xbox One and that speculation and, and all that, all the people with the, the always online, okay, and I'm not, I, I understand the always online issue. Sure, sure. Um, uh, but for, for Atari... Who cares about the always online? You know, uh, in all digital consoles. Yeah, is anyone discs. gonna? No Atari one's gonna be crying foul when you, when they want their Atari uh, console and the thing is always online because that's just how they do it or whatever. It's like no, no one's. Not that exactly. many people are gonna cry that loudly. So I could this be a viable, realistic, first serious entry into an all digital? major game console it's clearly all digital the thing it only the has first, an sd card slot at the most the first all did oh I, i'm sorry i believe it has it does have an ethernet port <laughs> sorry just okay. don't want to leave that out okay. um, uh so like could this be the first viable entry into market okay of an all digital console with the modern gaming content you know, we're not just talking about a NES Classic. We're not talking about an Ouya. Okay, we're not even talking about an Nvidia Shield. We're talking about modern game content. Right. On a a modern ish console that's all digital. Could this be a the the first real entry into that? And I'm not talking I mean, about the Apple all, TV's failed attempt. Still, still, that's all interesting, fine, fun, and dandy. But the thing is, what's it gonna be running? And can third par- can third parties make their games for this? And will they even want to? Now, now, I mean, the easy it's answer okay, is that this thing. It, what is? It's PC based technology. It should be pretty easy to port to. Okay. Well, well, that's the thing is that I, I heard that it was potentially an Android or running an Android OS, which would so be a common ones. easy answer. You know, I mean, even the uh, the, the, the Switch actually was rumored to be running a uh, a modified version of Android. I think that was. That's a long disproved rumor, but whatever. Uh, the, uh, I don't know that <sighs> Android could be a viable option, but then and then it's like, yeah, you can get like a uh, a mobile suite of games, okay. But I mean, then again, it's been tried before with the ooh yeah, and so and that's exactly I don't know. like I don't want to see them move towards the mobile market with this. Please this don't. Thing pull... Still smells like new plastic. No, please no. <laughs> I don't want to smell the ooh yeah stank. <laughs> So um, uh, yeah, it's still in there. So I, you know, I don't want to see mobile games ported to this thing. You know, it's like please stay away from that. Please, you know, I, I don't know. Do I have any room to to even talk? Well, here's the thing. This is they Atari. need to survive. They're going to need microtransactions. What about Capcom possibly? re-releasing all their 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 games? You know, with like Mega Man and stuff. There's Neo Geo games coming out on yeah, the, uh, or, or some Sonic games. You know, some Sega classic games. Are they going to be coming to the Atari console? You think it, everyone's going to be desperately so Sonic running Mania to put on this? That would be cool. Now, all that being said, we do not have a release date. We do not have a price. We do not have specs. This is just all oh, stuff. Oh, speculation because us. they were so vague. 
That's so what we got so far. Big. That's what we got so far. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out more. We'll find out more soon enough. Alrighty. Um, well, if anything, I believe that has been a podcast. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, uh, thank you for joining us on the Gaming Twins weekly show. Um, we appreciate uh, your watching. Now, if you like this video, you can always like or you, you can subscribe. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, if you're on the Twitch, hit that follow button. Now, hey, all that's that being thing. said, if you see us here or you saw us on our YouTube video, mm -hmm. just so you know, we are on Google Play and we're on iTunes. So yep. check that out. Hit that subscribe button so that you can get like, all of the comment review live. stuff, you know. All that fun stuff. Yeah. So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, just so you know, my name is Nick, okay? And you can follow me on Twitter at Nick underscore Ditto. If you want to talk to me or discuss and say, hey, man, your hair is kind of cool. Just wanted to say that. You can say that to me. And I'm Chuck I'd appreciate Ditto. it. I'd appreciate it. Don't yes. disinclude me. You, you got a lot of self-promo there. What about me, man? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, so if you want to talk directly with us, you, you can absolutely talk directly with us, and we'll talk with you and everything. Uh, so yeah, if anything, thank you for, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for watching.